Most of the people who carry out research into consciousness, such as neuroscientists, psychologists, psychiatrists and philosophers, are still of the opinion that there is a materialist and reductionist explanation for consciousness. They still believe that consciousness is nothing other than matter, and that our subjective experience, that our consciousness is something purely personal and differs from someone else's consciousness is merely an illusion. According to this scientist, consciousness originates entirely from the matter that constitutes our brain. We have to admit that it is not possible to reduce consciousness to neural processes as conceived by contemporary neuroscience, because it is still an unproven assumption that consciousness and memories emerge from brain function. And until now, there is no scientific evidence for neural correlates of all aspects of subjective experience. Direct evidence of how neurons or neuronal networks could possibly produce the subjective essence of the mind and thoughts is currently lacking. We cannot measure what we think or feel. We measure just changing activation. A neuroactivation is simply neuroactivation. It only reflects the use of structures. This could be compared with a radio. You can activate the radio by turning it on. And you can activate a certain wavelength by tuning on a special channel. But you will not have any influence on the content of the program you are going to hear. Activating the radio does not influence the content of the program. A neural activation alone does not explain the content of emotions or sensations. With our current medical and scientific concepts, it seems indeed impossible to explain all aspects of subjective experiences as was reported by patients with an NDE during the transient loss of all functions of the brain. But science, I believe, is to search for explaining new mysteries rather than to stick with old facts and concepts. Friedrich van Eden, a famous Dutch MT, MD and author, mentioned already in 1890 in his lecture about progress in current science, personally I am more than ever convinced that the largest enemy of scientific progress is to reject and to refuse to study before and out of prejudice seeming un incomprehensible, strange and unknown facts. How up to date? And Thomas Kuhn, the famous professor of philosophy and history of science at the MIT, maintained that, contrary to popular conception, most typical scientists are not objective and independent thinkers. They try to bring the theory and facts into closer agreement according to the beforehand accepted paradigm, which Kuhn described essentially as a collection of beliefs shared by scientists, a set of agreements about how problems should be understood. As a result, scientists tend to ignore or even ridicule research findings that might threaten the existing paradigm. <coughs> As William James once has said, a great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging the prejudices. And so all those observations that cannot be explained by the current worldview are called anomalies, because they are recognized as violation of the paradigm-induced expectations that govern normal science. And of course, these findings are initially overlooked, ignored, or rejected as an error. Near-death experiences are such anomalies because the cause and con content of an NDE cannot be simply explained by our current scientific ideas about the range of human consciousness and the mind-brain relation. So it is indeed a scientific challenge to discuss new hypotheses that could explain the possibility to have clear and enhanced consciousness with memories with self-identity, with cognition, with emotion, <coughs> with the possibility of perception out and above the lifeless body. 
to explain the reported interconnectedness with the consciousness of other persons and of diseased relatives, to explain the possibility to experience instantaneously and simultaneously non-locality, a review or a preview of someone's life in a dimension without our conventional body-linked concept of time and space, where all past, present and future events exist and even to explain the experience of the conscious return to the body. And it is important to mention that until now it has been impossible to induce a real out-of-body experience with theoretical perception from a position out and above the body by any method whatsoever, despite incorrect suggestions about the possibility in the medical literature while this dis just describing bodily illusions. In a recently released book, Consciousness Beyond Life, which was a bestseller in the Netherlands with more than 100,000 copies sold within one year, I describe a concept in which our endless or non-local consciousness with declarative <coughs> memories find its origin in and is stored in a non-local space and the brain only serves as a relay station for parts of this non-local consciousness to be received in two or s our waking consciousness. Could our brain be compared to the TV set which receives electromagnetic waves and transforms them into image and sound? And at the same time could it be well compared to the TV camera which transforms image and sound into electromagnetic waves? These waves hold the essence of all information but are only perceivable by our senses through suitable instruments like camera and TV set. The function of the brain should be so be compared as a transceiver, a transmitter receiver or interface, exactly like the function of a computer. Different neuronal networks function as interface for different aspects of our consciousness and the function of neuronal networks should be regarded as receivers and conveyors, <coughs> not as retainers of consciousness and memories. In this concept, consciousness is not rooted in the measurable domain of physics, our manifest world. This also means that our infinite or enhanced consciousness in non-local space is inherently not measurable by physical means. However, the physical aspects of consciousness, which originate from the wave con aspect of our non-local consciousness through collapse of the wave function, objective reduction, can be measured by means of neuroimaging techniques like EEG, fMRI, PET scan. With this concept about non-local consciousness and its relation with the brain, all reported elements of an NDE during cardiac arrest could be explained. In trying to understand this concept of interaction between non-local or endless consciousness with the material body, it seems appropriate to compare it with modern worldwide communication. There is a continuous exchange of objective information by means of electromagnetic fields for radio, TV, mobile telephone or laptop computer. We are not consciously aware of the vast amounts of electromagnetic fields that constantly day and night, exists around us and even permeating us. At this very moment, we are invaded by hundreds of thousands of telephone calls, by hundreds of radio and TV programs, and by innumerable websites. We only become aware of this electromagnetic informative fields at the moment we use our mobile telephone or by switching on our radio, TV or laptop. What we receive is neither inside the instrument nor in the components, but thanks to the receiver, the information from the electromagnetic fields become observable to our senses, and hence perception occurs in our consciousness. The voice we hear over our telephone is not inside the telephone. The concert we hear over our radio is transmitted to our radio. The images and music we hear and see on TV are transmitted to our TV set. Internet with more than one billion websites can be received in our computer at about the same moment in the USA, in Europe and in Australia. It is obviously 
not located inside our laptop, nor is it produced by it. Having discussed the findings of several important scientific studies on NDE and its after effects, one can conclude that they challenge our current concepts about consciousness and its relation with brain function. And its conclusions are important for our scientific concepts in the Western world because this view of consciousness as a non-local phenomenon might well induce a huge rate change in current paradigms. Such understanding also fundamentally changes one's opinion about death because of the almost unavoidable conclusion that at the time of physical death, consciousness will continue to be experienced in another dimension in which all past, present and future is enclosed. Quote, Death is only the end of our physical aspects. I believe now that death, like birth, may be a mere parting from one state of consciousness into another. However, we should acknowledge that research on any cannot give us the irrefutable scientific proof of this conclusion, because people with an NE did not quite die, but they all were very close to death and without a functioning brain. As I, ex as I have explained, it has indeed been scientifically proven that during NDE, enhanced consciousness was experienced independently of brain function. Quoting from a recent death announcement, all what you have falls into decay, but what you are lives on beyond time and space. So we have a body and we are conscious. <coughs> Without a body we still can have a conscious experiences. Recently someone with an NDE wrote me, I can live without my body, but apparently my body cannot live without me. Mm -hmm. One cannot avoid the conclusion that endless consciousness has and always will exist independently from the body. There is no beginning nor will there ever be an end to our consciousness. We asked ourselves if there is a biological basis for consciousness anyway. Yes, there is a kind of biological basis for our waking or consciousness because our physical body functions as an interface. But no, there is no biological basis for our whole endless or enhanced consciousness because it is rooted in non-local space. So our enhanced consciousness resides not in our brain and is not limited to our brain because our consciousness is non-local and our brain has a facilitating function and not a producing function to experience consciousness. So now we can conclude that our waking consciousness which we experience as our daily consciousness is only a part of our whole and endless or non-local consciousness. This view of a non-local consciousness allows us to understand a wide variety of special states of consciousness just as can be experienced during a critical medical situation, an MDE, during an acute situation of apparently unavoidable death in an imminent traffic accident, and fear death experience, during meditation or deep relaxation and mystical, religious or enlightened experience, during changing states of consciousness during regression therapy, hypnosis, isolation or the use of drugs like LSD or DMT, during the terminal phase <coughs> of life, deathbed vision or near-death awareness or end-of-life experiences, or at the moment of death of a close relative a shared death experience or empathetic NDE. The interconnectedness with these informative fields of non-local consciousness also explain enhanced intuition, like clairvoyance, clairaudience, prognostic dreams and visions, which is non-local information exchange. As I told before, following an NDE, most people offer to their own amazement and confusion may experience an, such an enhanced intuitive sensibility which means having access 